Israel has formed a new government, essentially ousting Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu from office. He has been the Prime Minister for the last 12 years. And this was really an interesting effort by a coalition government meant to oppose him, oust him. And this coalition government is essentially a group of smaller parties, many of which have giant disagreements with one another, but have one agreement, which is the importance of ousting Benjamin Netanyahu from the position of prime minister. Now, Naftali Bennett is the new prime minister and the coalition government for the first time includes Arab representation. Yair Lapid will be Bennett's coalition partner. Now, let me give you some more details. The Israeli parliament on Sunday approved the new power sharing government by Bennett, the orthodox leader of Israel's religious nationalist movement and a former Netanyahu aide in a close vote of confidence, 60 to 59 with one abstention. Now, I wanna note, I'm sure you've already noticed that we're talking about a prime minister who worked very closely with Netanyahu as an aide, someone who's described as a religious nationalist and that is obviously relevant for anyone who's wondering if this new coalition government will lead to any significant changes in the treatment of Palestinians. It does not appear to be the case, especially given the leadership here and given the only real agreement that the coalition government has or the various parties in the coalition has. And that is just the effort to oust Benjamin Netanyahu, who to be quite frank has been incredibly brutal to Palestinians and has been a an authoritarian leader. Now, the new government is fragile. Again, I wanna really emphasize that. And Netanyahu's Likud run government will now be replaced with a hodgepodge of Israeli parties that came together around the prospect of removing the sitting prime minister, despite their limited agreement on a few issues. I wanna get to the White House's response to this. But before I do so, I also want to provide a video of Benjamin Netanyahu's final speech as prime minister. Because he did not in any way appreciate this effort and is not happy about the fact that he's been ousted from the from being prime minister. So he kind of had this scorched earth reaction to it. Let's take a look. I didn't hear Bennett. He doesn't have the international standing. He doesn't have the credibility. He doesn't have the ability. He doesn't have a government, he doesn't have the ability to put up genuine opposition. And from all the differences, of which there are many, between us and the incoming government, this is the most important and fateful difference for the future of the state of Israel. An Israeli prime minister must be able to say no to the president of the United States on matters that endanger our existence and to back this up with massive work in Congress, in the Senate and in public opinion in the greatest democracy, which is the United States. That is what I did in 2015 when I spoke in the US Congress, despite the opposition, the fierce opposition of the President of the United States. Who will do this now? Prime Minister Yair Lapid, who attacked my speech in Congress, because most members of the government designate support the nuclear agreement. So what Netanyahu is referring to there, of course, is the 2015 nuclear agreement with Iran. Benjamin Netanyahu also had a tumultuous relationship with President Barack Obama because Obama had the audacity to demand that Netanyahu stop building settlements in the West Bank and the Gaza Strip. And so that's what he's referring to when he says that I was the one who was willing to go against the United States. And he's trying to make this accusation that Naftali Bennett will govern differently, but there's really no indication that's the case. And Jenk, I want you to you know, take it over from here about yeah. that issue. So as usual, this is a topic that requires a lot of nuance. But the first part of it is clear. Down goes Netanyahu, down goes Netanyahu. I couldn't be more happy about that. So thank you, Israel, for making that happen. Netanyahu is the worst of the worst. He's basically Dick Cheney and Donald Trump combined. So he has a warmonger. Uh, tendencies of Dick Cheney and also to some degree Donald Trump. And he's a personally corrupt, pathological liar, total narcissist, 
has started several conflicts for his own political benefit. He's a monster, so good riddance. He was in office here for 12 years in a row. Previous to that, he was in office for three years, 15 horrible years, at least in terms of the political governance of Israel. And it only led to more conflict, more war, more oppression. He will not be missed by anyone outside of rabid right wingers who wanted nothing but more war. Now, the reason it's nuanced is because his replacement is not much better. Historically, his some of his statements have been even worse than Netanyahu's. Now, but that's not the end of the story either. He is part of a coalition government. And in a parliamentary system, you must have almost always, sometimes you could win an outright majority, but almost always a coalition government. And it depends on who's in your coalition. But first, let's tell you. What a terrible guy Naftali Bennett is. Now, you're not gonna get this from any of the mainstream media, obviously, right now. Oh my God, Israel, 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 Netanyahu's gone. They began to realize, you know, 88 years too late, that maybe Netanyahu's a rabid right winger, right? Um, and, but with Bennett, uh, right now, of course, the pre- uh, Joe Biden, our uh, Blinken, our uh, Secretary of State are all like, "Oh, Bennett is so great, so wonderful." Yes, yes, yes. No, that's not true. Naftali Bennett said, "Quote: I've killed a lot of Arabs in my life, and there's no problem with that." Now, look, in the military, you might have killed people, but when you specifically say, "I've killed Arabs, and I have no problem with that," well, that's obviously a toxic comment and it gives you a state of mind. But it doesn't matter; every comment is like that. And when it, he's a his party is a pro settler party, he they believe that they should have all of the land and that the Palestinians, hence accordingly, have no rights at all. And he does not believe in a Palestinian state. He actively fights against one. On the settlements, he said we should, quote, build, build, build. And that's, of course, over Palestinian territory. So in that sense, he's not only a warmonger, he's an occupier. And remember, he was deep allies with Netanyahu before he decided, well, why don't I just take his power, right? And then finally, he said a Palestinian state is pointless and that he would never advocate for one and never allow one. So understand that the new boss is not that different than, than the old boss. But within his coalition, uh, our moderate parties uh, is in fact even an Arab party within Israel. And it is a tenuous coalition. Mm-hmm. It's 60 to 59 in a 120 person parliament. Uh, Naftali Bennett's own party only has six seats out of 120. He cobbled together the coalition, and if he goes too aggressively against Palestinians, presumably the coalition would fall apart because of the Arab parties and the moderate parties, etc. Which then brings us back to Netanyahu, who said not only the comments you saw there, but he said, I would lead you, and this is very Trumpian, in a daily struggle against the evil and dangerous leftist government in order to topple it, he says on day one. God willing, it will happen a lot faster than what you think. Almost word for word what Donald Trump said. Mm-hmm. So that's who Bibi Netanyahu is. Exactly. Um, you know, and, and one other thing I wanted to add about Bennett is, you know, in the speech that we showed you, or the portion of the speech we showed you featuring Netanyahu, he talks about how um, he was a far better leader because of the fact that he was willing to go against the United States and the Iran nuclear deal, which by the way, As we all know, Donald Trump ripping up the Iran nuclear deal did not make the world safer, it made it less safe. And that's exactly what Benjamin Netanyahu was demanding. Well, Naftali Bennett is really no different. As Axios reports, Bennett took a hard line on the Iran, I'm sorry, hard line on the Iran deal in his speech. So he gave a speech as well, saying that it was a mistake in 2015 and it remains one today. And, you know, it really, at this point, is abundantly clear that it doesn't really matter who the Prime Minister of Israel it is. You're gonna get the same response from the US government and I'll give you the response from Joe Biden. So the White House said Biden offered quote, 
his warm congratulations and expressed his firm intent to deepen cooperation between the United States and Israel on the many challenges and opportunities facing the region. Biden said his administration plans to work closely with the Israeli government on efforts to advance peace, security and prosperity for Israelis and Palestinians and underscored his decades of steadfast support for the US Israel relationship and his unwavering commitment to Israel's security. And that wasn't the end of it. You also have an official statement coming from the Pentagon, coming from the Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin. A spokesperson for Lloyd Austin said, Secretary Austin looks forward to continuing the important cooperation and dialogue with Minister Gantz. He will remain the defense minister to deepen the US Israel strategic partnership. The US commitment to Israel's security remains ironclad. So while it's great to have Benjamin Netanyahu out, we also have to be real about how the US perspective or perception on, on peace in that region remains the same. And it hasn't been good as we know what we got from the Biden administration repeatedly during the latest round of violence and aggression toward the Palestinians was Israel has the right to defend itself. They're gonna continue on with that talking point. And Naftali Bennett as the prime minister is really no different from Benjamin Netanyahu, even though he does, yes, have this coalition government behind him. Yeah, so just a quick note on how similar the governments are, unfortunately. Uh, Gantz was defense minister under Netanyahu, he continues to be defense minister under uh, Bennett. Uh, so, and Gantz is to the left of Netanyahu because it's near impossible to be the, to the right of Netanyahu. But Gantz is also the guy who talked about wiping out the Palestinians in the recent conflict. So um, yes, there are a lot of good guys within the moderate and left wing Israeli politics. And we applaud that the fact that they helped to get Netanyahu out. Uh, not a lot of peaceful um, folks in the right wing of Israeli government have said vicious things about Palestinians and plan to continue the occupation it seems for an forever and ever. But one last thing about our role in this uh, as America. Uh, one of the selling points for Naftali Bennett was, I will get along with both Republican and Democratic presidents and Netanyahu endangered Israel by picking a side and only supporting the Republicans. And that's why you saw Netanyahu say what he said, "Oh, I have courage, I took on the Democrats. We don't need no stinking Democrats. By the way, Democrats still while he was in office were like, oh, Netanyahu, what can we do for you? He's spitting in your face. You could actually have courage and stand up to him. Anyways, but, but Bennett's position is basically, no, we're not gonna give the Palestinians a state. And if need be, we're gonna keep on bombing them. We're just gonna get the Democrats to support us just as much as the Republicans. That doesn't really make it any better. So be clear about that. And and Biden saying effusive praise and over and over again, anything you want, my beloved ally, doesn't help the situation. Yes, Canada, UK, Israel are allies. But it doesn't mean that we should take any right wing leader of that country and go, anything you want, no matter what you do, we will definitely support you. That is not a strong position and, and that's not a position that progressives should back. Thanks for watching The Young Turks, we really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more, there's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR, so those are super fun, but you also get playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video, thank you.